Welcome back to the Weebs and Waits podcast, episode, I think, 107 at this point. And we've been off for a while, but we're starting a whole new endeavor of bringing, like, IRL protagonists into the game. And the very first... Oh, I, I'll call you the first one. We'll give you the title. We'll give you the title. Mike I'll Monahan, also Mike's Monsters on YouTube and Instagram. Photographs, videos, editing kaiju the 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 man that i think might know the most about monster related things that i've ever met so i can't put you to the test because i don't know any of it so <laughs> i'm just gonna give you the title on that one thank you for coming man. i'll take it i'll take it thank you yeah. happy to be here appreciate it yeah appreciate it's it. good to be here yeah man i don't know if i know all the monster things some people like to quiz me on the spot and then i look like a dweeb because i can't think of anything on there but I'll take that crown now. For yeah, the well, so I guess this is the, the perfect way to start it off is like, what Godzilla is the best Godzilla movie and why is the one from 1998? <laughs> I'm, I'm going to go. Just, uh... <laughs> um, no, that's that's offensive to some Godzilla fans. And I'm, I'm sure, not that yeah. kind of Godzilla fan. I, I support people who like that movie, even if it's not my cup of tea. But like I said, it's not my cup of tea. It's... It, it, it's a Godzilla movie, though, in title, and they tried some things, didn't work out, and that caused them to course correct and get us to where we are today. And if that hadn't happened, I don't know if we'd be getting the awesome stuff we've had over the last few years. So yeah, yeah. Godzilla 98 is a necessary evil. I'm one of those people that I'll watch it every once in a while and be like, <laughs> okay, but... Thank God that for, ended. Yeah. It's, yeah, it's not for me. I appreciate what they did for some things, and some things they made some horrible choices, but... That's, that's a talk for another day. But like every franchise needs that, right? Like they yeah, need yeah. the one that just goes, you can't do what you want to do all the time. Yeah. Like, you know, yeah. like... there's always been something. I think even Star Wars, people would say that the, like the prequels were that at one point, but now people look at the prequels in a different light because of <laughs> some of the choices they made there recently. And yeah. so there's, it's a, it's, there's a one side to everything. Like, Don't get me started really on black... Star Wars. Don't get me started yeah, on that it's one. It's not yeah. so black and white as the people would like to say sometimes. So what is the the best Godzilla movie in your opinion? I guess. Uh, so that's also a very tough choice for. I mean, there's thirty plus of them, so yeah. it's it's different. For I think every Godzilla fan will give you a different answer. Um, my personal is called Godzilla vs. Biollante, where Godzilla fights a giant mutated uh, rose, plot like a flower. Okay. Uh, but it's mixed with Godzilla cells and human DNA, and it turns into a giant abomination situation it's oh. mad science mad science um uh, government conspiracies um spies uh, uh, a whole bunch of crazy stuff all in one movie okay it's from nine it's from 1989 i like to think it's the first godzilla movie i ever saw because it's the first one i remember seeing as a child okay, okay. came out came out right around when i was born uh it's very much not a kids Godzilla movie, so that was a weird choice for my dad to make. But I don't think he <laughs> knew that going from the silly Godzilla movies he grew up with to this yeah. like very serious, kind of grounded, but it's still Godzilla, so it's campy, like dark science fiction monster movie with yeah, like yeah. weird horror elements every once in a while. So that personally, and it, you'll hear it from a lot of Godzilla fans. That's a fan favorite one. Okay. It's just a solid, solid movie all around. But then you've got Shin Godzilla. That one's a masterpiece. Like so, I Hideaki made sure Yano. I watched it. I made sure I watched oh, yeah. it before we got here. Yeah. Oh gosh, that's a, I, a masterpiece. I have a giant Shin Godzilla. Let's see if I can show him. Do you on have it? Right yes. Here. Oh yes, he's like right next to me down here. Let's see if I can get his head to pop up. There he is. He's like right. Here. Oh yeah. That thing. How do I point off of camera? There, there you he go. Is. Like, <laughs> there he is. He's oh, right down yeah, there. Baby. He's big. He's a foot for context. Oh my god, dude! Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So. Got a big guy right there. He's he's awesome. That movie is awesome. Hideaki Anno, Ev Evangelion. I mean, he he's a master yeah. himself. So he bringing Godzilla to life. That that movie I think is like the best Godzilla movie. But there are other movies that I like more. You know. So I watched. I don't know if you've seen it yet. Did you watch? Um. Uh oh my god the brain shuts off um common rider did you watch the shin common rider no it, it's on my it's on my list like i, I get my wisdom teeth out and i think yeah. that's one of my wisdom teeth watches as well Dude. like that's gonna be one of those like i keep seeing things and i meant to see it in theaters i just ran out of like it wasn't no, i mean time they only gave us two days you know what I mean? yeah so... and i was like in the middle of convention season i think yeah, when that yeah. happened or whatever so i couldn't do it and 
yeah so no that's on the list uh but i did see shin ultraman and okay. i liked that it wasn't it wasn't my favorite um i do enjoy ultraman but that movie was uh narratively they they smushed too much into a story into one short movie for me that yeah that's like three seasons of a, of a tv show in one movie that needed a little but bit ultraman more like never breathe. ends like because it, no, the, the, it they kept they keep passing the baton right so like yeah it just you could going. do whatever yeah. you want with that yeah. you know yeah um dude the shin but like shin godzilla mm-hmm. i don't even know how to start this conversation what is it about japanese cinema that makes it so entertaining for us and so uh, good they definitely have i mean it's different for everything um it depends on who you're whose movie you're watching you've got like the miyazaki movies mm-hmm. you've got the hideaki ono movies um uh then there is plenty of the japanese filmmakers that like actually made live action godzilla movies there's akira kurosawa who did like seven samurai all those they have just this and we see it in anime too like there's this almost western style sometimes the things yeah, yeah. like where where um you have this the showdown between the two warriors or something like that or i guess in this situation it's the showdown between the japanese government and a giant godzilla force that they can't stop it's like they have an experience that a lot of us don't have with mm. things like the bomb being dropped on them mm-hmm. and perspectives of the fukushima disaster the the earthquake that hit yep which Shin Godzilla is based off of. If you watch the footage of the the earthquake and all the tsunamis and stuff, and then watch the first steps of Godzilla coming into the city and seeing all the like the the tsunami from that happening, it's very like they parallel on purpose. There's shots from the sky of the city on fire. Yeah, that yeah. Look like news, it like very real. So I think they put a lot of their personal experience into their work along with their spirituality if that's a way to put yeah, it yeah, I, i'm okay, not yeah. sure how to if i'm i'm not sure if i'm wording that correctly but i say, I say that with like the miyazaki aspect of it there's always this magical spiritual thing yeah and even the very government based like bureaucratic godzilla movie like shin godzilla there is still that spiritual we can overcome this and we can i don't know if spiritual is the right word but they have this belief that they can with power of like mind and like an figuring effort it out as and like yeah of people kind of thing uh that's something very japanese you yeah. see someone fall down on a sidewalk in japan and everyone comes over to help them up like that's just like i don't know how to connect this all into one like cohesive sentence but i feel like i've made a correct point no you're here. Good. no yeah they have something something special and that's why it's so fun to watch these I mean, their budgets are so much lower than a, a Hollywood production as well, too. So they have to pull off what they're doing with very little, and usually they can. And if they like, even even classic Godzilla movies, they made them like a an Ultraman movie where they had uh, Ultraman show where they had puppets and and suits and, yeah. and buildings that were built out of cardboard and and all these things. And and there's an art to that. It's something respectable. They used their hands and they made something and then if somebody fell over on set what before they hit uh, record on camera and knocked all the buildings over they'd have to build it all over again for right, two weeks right. and then shoot it again so there's this respect that i think as a viewer you might not have you see it you see that they put a lot of work into it and it makes you just want to watch it mm, interesting it no it does no it does it's it's it, yeah. yeah that's interesting They're like that's huh, i never thought yeah. of it that way actually yeah like yeah. you you can that's feel how I, that's how i view this stuff no yeah you can you can I feel guess. like like every piece of it like has mm-hmm. a has a purpose right it's not like yeah. they just take i mean they do this in some anime right now especially with like the us transitioning more to cgi related stuff like the 3d animation yeah yeah. where like they'll take like the same character model and slap a random face on it and everyone in the background is exactly. like it's like an old madden game where all the guys in the crowd are like doing the same thing and it definitely loses some like connection to whatever reality that they have right so it's that interesting that you said feeling. that yeah or like this mm-hmm. is like every piece of it is like meticulously tied together for a reason yeah and it's yeah and it might not it it's sometimes budget factors too. Like they mm. couldn't build the buildings the way they wanted to. So they had to build them a little cruder and, but they were going to blow them up anyway. So they film it in a way that you can't see how crudely built the building was or something Camera like that. Camera angles There's always... is insane yes, exactly. in these. It, like uh, when you yes. see, when you see Common Rider, I'll be really interested to to hear your opinion on that too. And maybe we'll come back for that one. But like, yeah, possibly, man, it was the only issue I had was there was a couple of like Michael Bay sequences in there. 
and oh. I was just like, what is like, I want to throw up what happened here. Right. But it was like the uh, weirdest yeah, moments just... too. And it was like, mm. okay. But like, besides that, everything else of it, I like walked out of that, like ear to ear grinning. And like my, my buddy Dylan was there. He came to, I forced him to come oh, with me. I remember Dylan. Yeah. You got to remember Dylan. He, yeah. uh, we went together and he was just like, you really enjoyed that. Huh? I was like, I am in heaven right now. I was like, I'm coming back <laughs> tomorrow before they're out. Like I'm coming back. I went back and watched it again. Like it was, nice. yeah, man, it was oh, It's so good. I just, something about, and maybe it's the weeb in us. I don't know. Maybe we're just, it might be. I mean, there's <laughs> something know? about it that it hits the right. Like for me, it's also big dinosaur. I like dino- dinosaurs. <laughs> so why can't I like it? Like, yeah, man. <laughs> It's the simple aspect of that too. It's fun. Like I mean, if our shirts don't give it away, it. you know what I mean. A buddy yeah, of mine sent me this, like, and then you're wearing the Studio yeah. Kaiju, which is a phenomenal yeah. shirt, by the way. I will thank say you, that again. You. Yeah. Thank you. I appreciate so, it. Yeah. yeah. No, there's good, there's stuff all over the place here. Like I've got man, you you have. Everywhere. I already said this <laughs> off off camera, but you're 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 putting me to shame. I have a small. I have a decent setup over there. You've probably seen it in like some of the videos, but like, I'm trying to figure out how do I rotate my desk and not have it look like a mess because i have like 43 boxes over there of stuff that i need to open and go through so i'm like okay where do i hide this stuff you know but yeah usually it's everything's like right beside me here it's a mess like from here <laughs> over <laughs> out of sight yeah. out of mind yeah 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 so boxes. how do you so yeah. <laughs> how did you get into photography like how did you get into the cinematography photography side of things like was it the monster background that got you there yeah it was Godzilla. Really? It was okay. it was Alien. It was Predator. It was um, I. I've always been a toy collector. I've always taken really good t- care of my toys, even since I was a baby. Like I don't know why, but I was one of those that always like had my toys out on display as a kid too. I put them on my desks and shelves. Everything really yeah, well, yeah, yeah. really well, nicely laid out and everything. Um, I have a younger brother. At the younger ages, we were not like that. <laughs> he was not like that. He was more <laughs> destructive. He's come to grow to be organized like I have. Um, but uh, basically, I grew up watching all that stuff daily, like multiple times. Da- I would watch probably I put a Godzilla movie in, and it would end and put Jurassic Park in, and and put another Godzilla movie in or something, Ninja Turtles something. I'd have something always on to watch. And I think that visually inspired me a lot. I always have been in the arts too, drew okay. a lot. I eventually wanted to be a comic book artist in my like teen years, got into Photoshop and graphic design in my high school years, which then pulled me away from the comic book stuff. Mm-hmm, and mm-hmm. like Photoshop opened up a whole new world. And that got me into messing with cameras because I went into went to school for photo- um to, to first graphic design at first. Sorry, went to school for graphic design. And in the same time as taking that graphic design degree, I had to take a photography class, part of that whole degree. And okay. I was put into the camera department at Best Buy, the Best Buy I was working at, at the same time as that quarter, which then by the end of that quarter, I bought myself a, a fancy, at the time fancy, a small DSLR camera. Okay. And that that's what essentially my first subjects were my toys. And I, I, I lived out in the woods, out in Washington, um i had friends but they, like i wasn't a people photographer yet but a lot of my practicing started with my toys and just like my mom's garden with flowers and stuff like that i'd put the toys in the garden i'd take the toys in the garage and i'd see that shooting something inside the garage got a lot more moodier than taking it outside mm. and then i started to realize that oh the lighting is different and things like that and i started to shoot a little bit more cinematically and then i was like why don't i try to recreate the pictures i was seeing from the movies with my action figures that look just as good because it's like NECA and McFarlane at the time they were making really detailed alien and predators. And then I started to really just understand photography there and lighting and realizing, I think I like this. And then I kind of took my graphic design degree and pivoted and went to photography. Okay. Um, finished my graphic design degree, but graduated and immediately went to the art Institute of Seattle for a photography degree. And that's what led me to become a fashion and portrait photographer okay. by working with people and being forced to work with models and yeah. really finding out that I like to do certain things. And um, also just really finding out that I'm a really good people portrait photographer. I didn't know that at the time and got practice and got real good at that. And eventually the toy photography kind of took, went to the side because I was just becoming so busy with people. I was traveling, I was shooting for brands. I was working for Nordstrom full time at the time as their website photographer. Oh, wow. um, I actually dropped out of school because my teacher was one of the photographers at Nordstrom and told me, you don't need to be going here. You don't need to get a piece of paper to say you're 
a photographer, you're good enough to be out there making the money right now. So come down to the studio in a few weeks and we'll give you an interview. And I was like, oh, sure, cool. I'll try that. And then I got a job and then I dropped out. <laughs> I didn't expect any of that. And that just kind of, I became a wedding photographer in there too. And just yeah. like really built a business of just pure photography. And then somewhere around 2014, maybe 2013, I think, yeah, 2014 and 13, there was the new Godzilla movie coming out from the American legendary Godzilla verse, which was the, the first one of the whole franchise, the first Godzilla movie in like 10 years, I think, maybe more. Okay. Yeah. And something about that got me to pick up Godzilla toys and the camera. And then I started really messing with colorful lights. And I used to be really outdoor and natural lighting and no, no, no lights. And then I kind of started going backwards and learning lights again. And yeah, I started yeah, playing yeah. with my toys and experimenting with lighting on my toys. And I found it was much easier to do that instead of having a person sit there for so long while I mess with all this stuff. Right. And then I just started taking pictures of my toys again. Then sad story my mom passes away in 2016 and i moved back home with my family and in that i kind of come across a whole chunk of collection i didn't realize i had in storage and in my downtime of like figuring out what to do with life after she passed away i picked up my camera and started taking pictures of all of those toys and really just dove into toy photography moved to la shortly after that in 2019 and then that toy photography was getting me noticed by the people that made the monsters in the movies uh, because I'm posting them on Instagram and tagging these people. And then I got invited to uh, Studio ADI with a buddy of mine to uh, visit, which is a company that made the Alien and Predator movies. Mm -hmm. Like they are the guys that do the Aliens and Predators. So the company that made the monsters that inspired me to pick up the camera, you know, like, Full so I'm way, doing yeah. all these things and building relationships with these people and pandemic happens and like mm -hmm. all these things happen but i've still like managed to keep relationships with people still managed to build things but then because of the toy photography and focusing so much on that and not being able to take photos of people because of the pandemic mm -hmm. i got noticed by toy companies after that and that's where somebody like bandai came into the picture and <laughs> as you know that's where you and i met because i was working for bandai for a little while yeah um and like it just builds from there and it's just a lot of it was just me experimenting with my toys in my bedroom with my lights and tv as my background or whatever i had and just goofing around and doing what i can and pursuing the same childish passion that i had when i was a teenager trying to do trying to make the monster movies essentially that i wanted to make right and now i'm doing that essentially sometimes with the people that make those movies and it's uh, very surreal. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You, you, you uh, kind of like little Mike was like, "Damn, I'm, I'm yeah, not there. I, what happened?" Like, I I always say that if like 13 year old me who helped start an Alien versus Predator website podcast back in the day, which is now one of the biggest Alien Predator podcasts out there, it's called AVP Galaxy. Um, if I would have known that he was going to be getting invited to movie premieres for these Predator and Alien movies because of his photography and stuff, mm -hmm. like that little kid would not he would be thinking he's the coolest person on the planet. You know, like, and you are going to grow up to do that. <laughs> Thank and you. you are. You're very but welcome. <laughs> it's, 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 it's pretty hard to keep that perspective at times, but there, there is times where I need to check myself, you know? And it's yeah, like, yeah. What, the, what the F is this? <laughs> like, yeah, like zoom out for a second and just be yeah, like, Holy yeah. hell. Yeah. Yeah. Or I've seen things that some people wouldn't believe because I've been invited to the companies that make these movies and I'm seeing things for a movie that's not out yet. Mm -hmm. And like, fans would be dying right now over the things that i've seen yeah i'm um, waiting for the video i can't talk leaked, about you know? like, yeah exactly <laughs> things i can't talk about but if i just said something it would go like the fandom would know about it like the whole fandom would know about things if i said something so it's like that's kind of cool too is like being i uh, an alien and predator influencer at <laughs> yeah <laughs> like yeah it's it's nuts it's it's all because of my photography though and how passionate i've been about it and the drive and just never giving up and really just pushing myself to continuously be best i can be and get better because you always can get better at what you're doing you know you can't you can't say you're the best and do you so. do you find that that like the constant i don't want to say battle but for sake of the conversation the constant battle of going between human portrait stuff and doing that kind of side of stuff and then the toy photography because they they I'm ignorant when it comes to cameras, as you probably know, because I'm pretty sure different. I messaged you a couple of times to figure out, like, hey, how do I even turn this thing on? Um, right. <laughs> but, like, <laughs> the style from the toy photography stuff that you do and, like, taking 
like old bottles and cutting off the bottom of it to get like a certain lens color and then the mm-hmm. misting that you do with a bottle all these things that you do with that which i'd lo- want definitely want to dig into that side of it but then that but, and if then looking at my, yeah yeah, yeah get it in there see. yeah yeah it's like a water bottle and how, how does it does, work like, man it's magic you know magnets <laughs> it's like that little like glow glow right there that's cool but that's yeah. not the best way to do it but like so uh, like like but, does that conflict when you're like when you're doing toy stuff or are you able to just kind of like flip the switch because you've done it so much now that you know like this is the moment i'm in you know that's a great question um i i think for a while it was like i was trying to do all these crazy lighting experiments with every shoot i was doing be a person be a toy or this or that and that would sometimes slow the process down and i might miss a shot or just like hang too long in a moment when i lost the light and the sun or something mm-hmm. like that like so i have had to learn to be a little bit more just on the fly and quick quick thinking if it works it works if it doesn't it doesn't try it if it doesn't work don't give more than a minute or two to it you know yeah um and especially if you're working with real people because uh for instance on a gig i was just on in new york last week i was photographing uh, about 5 Broadway stars, like Broadway musical stars, a day, uh, three days in a row. So I had three 13 hour days. I only have about an hour or two with each of these people, and they they don't have a they don't have they can't they have a heart out. So I yeah, can only yeah. do so much with them. And they also may not be the most experienced in having their photo taken. So I have to really coach and direct them, teach them how to pose. And in that moment, still shoot with maybe crazy lighting effects or just straight where there's no effects. It's just using the lighting that's around the space. And it's, it's, it is tough. I mean, I I don't know if I've answered the question, but it's something where you do have to be on the fly. You have to, it's quick thinking. It's when I was a wedding photographer, I'd say I had to have the eyes in the back of my head. Yeah. Essentially shooting the bride and the groom dancing crazy with their friends and then all of a sudden i hear screaming behind me i have to turn around to see grandma doing a break dance to make sure i get that (laughs) shot you have to make sure you're like a heads on a swivel in situations like that but that kind of shoot a wedding shoot is completely different than shooting a model right uh, a a subject on a space where the lighting might be controlled i don't have to turn around and shoot behind me or something like that but I might have to know that there's someone standing behind me in case I need to step backwards and shoot so I don't step on them and fall over, you know? Right, right, right. Like, there's those factors. And then at home, when I'm shooting a toy, I don't have to deal with anybody having to go anytime soon, but then I can find myself spending three hours just messing with the lighting and not pulling the trigger yeah. and taking a photo. So, like, you got to really kind of sometimes just commit to the to the situation and go for it and don't think about it. Just Just do <laughs> And that's not the easiest thing for everybody because I, I know a lot of photographers and I know a lot of people that just don't know how to, I, I work with kids too. And you, with yeah. one thing I always say, work with photographing kids as a, like a, uh, at like Nordstrom, I would know there was a photographer on the set next to me who would sit and wait for the kid to get into the pose. And they jokingly like, Hey buddy, get your shot, get your, go, go do your thing. And then I would just be there. Even if the kid wasn't moving because the kid might, really quickly move and if i miss the shot i miss the shot you know yeah it's yeah, better yeah. to continuously shoot a lot and hope you get something <laughs> and then not shoot it at the same time so like there's so many i just gave you five different answers on how i shoot in, yeah in different with five with 14 situations. different situations yeah so. yeah it's, it's just being quick on your feet and your mind and just head on a swivel just be ready to go for anything and one uh, thing i've realized from just like and this is the most like bro thing i've ever seen out said out loud (laughs) but like when i'm recording like lifting related stuff for either myself or somebody else like i've realized that there are certain especially like you're your worst critic right so like when i see myself i think i'm very not photogenic i think i look like shit in every photo right that's just my personal yeah how dare i right um but that's just like such charisma you have so much energy what are you talking about it's crazy right (laughs) i don't i don't know how i do this but then i go do normal things and i'm like oh you know it's just weird Uh, it's the same it's the same i do i'm the same yeah and so like i've realized that like there's certain positions that even though i think they might suck and they're not good they're like legitimate like that's a model position that yes. even though you think they don't look good that's what they're looking for so like the, the amount of times someone's like what you mean like this and they, like, they feel like they're in this like really goofy pose but then i i'm in the right spot with the camera and it yeah. looks goofy yes but then the camera position and angle is all that matters and that 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 might be the money shot they might be in a goofy like 
<laughs> punch back those. <laughs> And then they put their eyes on camera, but I get the right angle, and it's like ends up being a romantic, beautiful shot or something like yeah, that. Because yeah. I put them in that like right, it, but sometimes it just feels goofy. The amount of times I've heard someone say this feels super silly, and then I'm like, just wait till you see the camera, and then they see it, and they're like, oh my oh god, my god, yeah, okay. let's do it again, yeah. yeah, let's do it again. Is this yeah. what you needed? I'll That's do whatever like, well, you need not. me to, yeah. And now I'm like, now you're not in the position anymore because you got too excited. So let's move on. <laughs> so let's when not try to school, recreate. When you were in school mm -hmm. for graphic design. Yeah, because my mom's an artist, so mm -hmm. she went to school. Um, I don't. I'm not gonna say it out loud because I don't know what the actual uh, date is, and I don't want her to beat me right. up. So, yeah. um, but like obviously, like there was probably a lot of whether you were. I'm assuming you did some a lot of like drawing related stuff too when it came to yeah. graphic design, obviously, yeah. right? So, mm -hmm. did you guys do model work where like you had like a like a human model in front of you, you were drawing certain angles and positions and stuff like that, or no? Ooh, I feel like we. Just, yeah, I feel like my school was so long ago now that yes, but it might have <laughs> gotcha. also been, yeah, uh, I, I'm 35 and I, I was doing this stuff when I was 18, so I'm trying to remember. <laughs> um, there were definitely times where I was doing figure drawing, yeah, but I don't know if it was actually figures. They may have just like had us doing still lives, which okay. setting up like apples yeah. and stuff on a thing and drawing that. But like I did in photography school, had to do like anatomy and um, form, which mm -hmm. is essentially the same thing as as the drawing and stuff like that. But it was using light to sculpt the body okay. and learn how to how to shape things that way too. And a lot of what you see in like black and white bodyscapes and stuff like that, which are like um, they almost look like sand dunes, but you look at it, and it's like someone's body. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a photo like that. That that was kind of how we learned how to do the form and stuff like that. It was called nude, even though they weren't naked or anything like that. But we were shooting skin and form and all that kind of stuff to learn how to light shapes and stuff like that with like a sliver of light on someone's skin mm -hmm. or something like that. And that's not as simple as just putting a light on, you know. Uh, so, do you feel that which way do you feel was more beneficial for you, learning with the toys first, and did that apply more to model shooting, or did I think the transition from model end up being like this is helping my toy set up better for angles and stuff like that? I think both are true. Okay. Um, yeah. I think the toy stuff gave me an edge when I I went to school, and I I definitely can be at times, and I always will admit it. But I went to school when I photography school very cocky because <laughs> <laughs> I um at the time was building a very good social media community around my photography mm -hmm. in 2010, I think it was, uh, on Facebook and beginning of Instagram. And I was getting work by just posting a picture on online. So it was, I was getting paid to go be a photographer before I even got a photography degree. Yeah, yeah. And so going into photography school like that probably wasn't the best um, <laughs> setup for me because I went in a little cocky. Um, then I got slapped down pretty hard by a few teachers pretty quickly uh realizing that i don't know what i was doing yeah <laughs> i yeah. just got luck i was getting lucky with oh i got good lighting right here or i got good lighting at this to on this toy or something like that so there were times where yes i was i was i felt like i was a little ahead because of my toy photography and experience there mm -hmm. but then there was some humbling moments in school but i got to pull some of the toy photography stuff back into school and like use that as assignments and stuff like that so that kind of got me to learn my toy photography a little bit better uh by using better lighting and all that kind of stuff and then when i became a full-time portrait photographer i found that i had been really experimental with uh, people and the way i was lighting them and the way i was doing things with like pieces of glass in front of my lens and stuff like that right right and then once i kind of took the break from the people stuff i started implementing all of those things into my toy photography and it just ah. all kind of built so yes, it's a full circle okay. thing, all of that. Yeah. Because so, that was going to be my next yeah. question was like the way you do the style for your toy photography. Mm -hmm. Like, I don't, I don't know if I really see that at all anymore, anywhere. You know what I mean? Like truly, I truly do. Like, and I mean that I'm not just saying that for the sake of just like me gassing you up. Like I saw that after you, you we met and I was like, mm -hmm. what is going on? Like well, I've I never that. seen this, like, cause like I, my brother's an engineer and he does a lot of 3d mm -hmm. printing stuff. So he's always messing around with shit. He's always trying yeah. to figure stuff out. And like, that's the first thing I thought of was like, he's literally, we were talking about earlier, throwing stuff at the wall and seeing what you liked, and, but like with your background. Yeah. yeah. And it's just like, yeah. man, like, and this transitions into like monster photography now, because like mm -hmm. you create such environments with just like the simplest things that you're doing. And I'm sure it's not simple. I'm sure you have like, 
a spray bottle in your toes and you're holding glass with your like you know maybe you're, you call the girlfriend in to be like hey i need you to do that you know what i mean like eventually so, every once in a while yeah but a lot of the times and and i'll put it this way i like to keep it as simple as possible so i can yeah i I, I say that so I don't say I'm as lazy as I am, but I like to keep it simple so I don't have too crazy of a setup because I don't always want to set up so much stuff. Yeah. <laughs> uh, to be honest, I don't like a lot of things around. I like it to be like me, camera, and toy, and maybe a light or two if I can. Yeah, Not yeah, yeah. 15 lights and this and that, and I, I, it gets too much for me. So I like to just, if I can just work with what I've got and then use my little whatever I've got, uh, be a piece of glass or something, effects that usually is doing all the work for me. Um, Cause if it gets to be too much, my brain just goes, there's too many pieces. Yeah, I, what I'm lost. Yeah. I, 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 what, how did I, how am I even going to recreate this or how could I get to this point again? I, I don't like that. Sometimes it is very much an unrecreatable shoot because yeah, yeah. the circumstances were very much that point in the day or something. Yeah, it's a unique thing. environment in the situation. Yeah. Right? yeah. Yeah. And I might have a specific background that's, psychedelic or something today and then tomorrow i use a red background so those backgrounds are completely going to give a different effect to the image or something like that and, did the inspiration uh, for that stuff come from the monster movies too mm-hmm. because like yeah, that's how they used to do like effects right like it was yeah, it, it yeah. was real it wasn't any yeah. kind of vfx stuff really it was like in they would the use moment, a projector you know? or something like they'd have a projector behind the, the actor in the suit or something or um kind of like star wars where they had the little models and you can see the edges of them before they mm-hmm. did all the special effects cleanup they they shot those on a blue screen or something like that uh sometimes they just shot in front of a, a live tv projection or something like that and yeah 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 so that's how i did I, ultraman does a lot of that they, yep. they had those like swirly painted like art swirls that they would use for the title sequences yeah yeah sometimes they just pull an app, a background like that up and call it a psychedelic ultraman inspired background and it perfect and everybody knows exactly what i'm going for because that visual was so tied to that so the monster side of things now not figures Mm -hmm. not people and i'm sure a lot of that transfers but when we're talking monsters we're talking very unreal like proportions it's not the same thing as shooting Mm -hmm. a dog or a cow or whatever you want to talk about like alien itself right yeah it has certain anatomical similarities to certain things but the way it's shaped and the smoothness and the glisten that it has on it because of like whatever glaze it has on it, the slime yeah. related things, like I don't even know how to ask this question. How? Like why? Well, like, yeah, I've got one right here too. You can we can use this as an example so people can see that. So like in the movies, and I maybe this is why I picked up the camera too. Like I would see that this creature was not lit like this with the light facing it. The mm-hmm. light was always coming from behind, so you'd only get like a shape of the silhouette or something. So you never really got to see the thing. Mm. And that was also what was so exciting about it was that you get the mystery. And that's probably why they're so exciting to watch is because I've seen Alien a million times and I know what the thing looks like, but every time I watch it, I kind of almost feel like I'm seeing something new every mm-hmm. time because of how they lit the thing. He's dark. He's in the shadows. You may it plays tricks with your mind. Um, there's something so interesting about that. It makes you kind of it taps into your the fear of your childhood, essentially being afraid of the dark at times. And and maybe that's something that's just super exciting to me always. Like I, I've never been able to. I grew up in the woods. I I had visions of ET staring out my window from the like that movie <laughs> creeped me out as a kid. So like I I have like these like experiences where i thought that things like that were happening then maybe that's never gone away too sorry you got did the mascot inside. <laughs> rigby come here if he comes here yeah we got the mascot yes yeah, sit like a human for us please that's it. That's it. That's it. That's it. Rigby. there it is rigby he's sitting he's chilling stud he is the inspiration for everything oh yeah yes as you can see mm. he's got the animals man like pets are yeah. like the prince the king of the household at all times yeah you know yeah what so oh, he's like i'm still I'm, I'm done here i'm yeah. done i'm like done done how is, how is um, he with figures Side he's note. not bad okay he's not bad uh when i first got him he would be pretty pretty like he was he's 10, 11 years old and i got him when he was a kitten so okay. he definitely was um curious much younger but nowadays he doesn't care yeah he, okay. he even might like walk up to big shin godzilla here next to the desk and rub up on him and Give them kit, kit, kitty kisses every once in a they're, while. They're but, gonna yeah. they're gonna take over the world together. That's why they know. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Shin Shin Catzilla. Um, <laughs> but then like there's just every monster. I, I back to the alien thing. Like yeah. I have a, a a love for each of them for a different reason. You right. Know? Like right. The, the alien is just so like it's so 
creepy, but it's also beautifully designed. And just like the artist H.R. Giger who designed it is just an incredible artist. And there's just so much artistry involved with this thing, but yeah. also it's ter terrifying. And if I saw one in real life, I, my pants would be terrified. <laughs> They'd be so messy. <laughs> but they also, like I said, they shot it so beautifully and so uniquely mysterious right? like, yeah. yeah mysterious like like they kept it in the shadows to make the audience think that they were seeing things they weren't seeing but then you have the predator which it was awesome to see fight arnold schwarzenegger like right you, yeah you got that but then you have its iconic look as well and everything about the predator first he's invisible and you're like oh crazy that's nuts that's like we've never seen that before and then the, he's not invisible he's just got this crazy mask on you're like oh that's what he looks like that's nuts and at the end of the movie, he takes his mask off and you're like, he's got another face. That's <laughs> nuts. And he's going to take out Arnold and he beats the crap out of Arnold. Like, that's just so something about that. And they're like face hunters that just the concept is incredible. I love that. Yeah. I, I don't know. I don't know what taps into that for me. But then you put Alien and Predator together and it's just like, great. But then you got Godzilla. The message that Godzilla came from is horrible. Yeah. <laughs> like, he is based off of the bombs that dropped in Japan, and he is the embodiment of the dead souls. In some Godzilla movies, he's the embodiment of the dead souls that went that t that day and are punishment to mankind. And that's dark. That's heavy. Yeah. It's like there's there's a lot going on there, and I respect that. And like, the, and then again, all the things I mentioned earlier about how they make those movies. Like, yeah. there's just there's a deep, deep cultural uh impact there for the whole world and i i, I think it's just super cool uh, again though big dinosaur <laughs> yeah which i love dino i loved <laughs> I dinosaurs love dinosaur, as a kid yeah. yeah i i was a dinosaur obsessed kid and he's the biggest and the strongest and the most powerful of all of them so he hit the right mark for me and uh, yeah so it's like my big heavy hitters are alien predator and godzilla so those ones to me are always going to be in my big three but then I do love, like, what else do I got up here? I've got Ninja Turtles. Ninja Turtles is always fun. <laughs> Those aren't classic. monsters, but they, yeah, like, classic. They're, 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 they, they're still more relevant than ever. We just had a new movie come out, which was amazing. I don't know if you saw it. I haven't. Um, no, I haven't yet. Oh, highly recommend it. Okay. Especially if you like the, like the Spider-Verse movies. This, this, I think I liked it better than Spider-Verse movies. Oh, okay. Honest. All right. I'll, yeah. uh, all right. I'll have to watch it. I'm a big okay. Turtles fan, but I loved the Spider-Verse, but I just, like, they're great. But like, yeah, I got Turtles down there. Alien Predator. Uh, Ghibli stuff like I've got these are um, studio these are Princess Mononoke prints over here they're really oh, yeah. hard to see yeah I couldn't tell what the they wolf. were it's the wolves and then in the background it's the tree of uh, the for the spirit of the forest okay um, okay it's the wolves and son just sitting there like I love all those and they're not necessarily monster movies but they have monsters in them right and uh, they're just beautifully made art pieces in my opinion the Ghibli work so I don't know something about things that don't exist that are kind of like they're not things that could exist. Like Predator is not real. Alien's not real. Godzilla's not real. But like the concept, what they're made from, it feels very right. grounded in a real, real situation. And then something about that's really fun to me. I've um, been and like I've re I've realized recently with like a lot of anime stuff too that the more mature I'm getting, not that that's happening very fast, but the more mature I'm getting, look at us. The, I know, like <laughs> I, I would say I might have to turn around. Um, yeah. The more I'm realizing and understanding like the I don't want to say subliminal messaging, but like the the underlying tones of certain things, the ingredients. Sometimes. Yeah, like like, like literally yeah. like there's like even even with DBZ. Right. And like yeah. I'm going to piss off a bunch of people right now. Right. DBZ for a lot of us is going to be a top 10 anime. But it's, oh, a it's, mid, no, it's, it's number one for me. Mid, but it's a <laughs> mid tier anime if you look at it overall. Right. Yeah. But yeah. You look at like some of the things that were talked about through Dragon Ball, through DBZ, like the Vegeta's character development from beginning mm -hmm. to end and like how it he spread away from like, yeah, he's got pride as a Saiyan, but it turned into like, I care about my family now and that's what I'm yeah. protecting. Like those yeah. small little things that they never really say out loud, but like the way he acts and the what his chase is to be strong and why, like those certain things are just like, I'm starting to understand them. And mm -hmm. I don't know if it's, freaking me out or if it's just like now i'm appreciating anime for the higher level that it, it actually is you know and i think it's gonna give you a stronger connection to that media oh. like i as i started to realize that stuff was specifically like dragon ball as well mm. like after the loss of my mom like i dove into dragon ball super and 
again, Vegeta, like he just, just like sometimes just gets you. <laughs> like yeah, he's just an yeah. angry person, but he'll say things that you're just like, yeah, dude, I get it. I totally get it. I get the struggle. You're always getting slapped down. And then you got doofus Goku over here always winning somehow. And it's like gotta be so <laughs> frustrating when you're like trying so hard and then the guy next to you gets the promotion. Like it, it it's yeah. very I mean, it's guys yelling and screaming in their like underwear sometimes and lightning powers but like at the same time it's super relatable yeah <laughs> like they there's there's definitely something that taps into what we are all trying to do and like that's what why we all like this stuff it, it it's relatable yeah and like it's, and that's why i've been like especially now because i'm like diving more into the anime side of things and i'm like really trying to get Part of Weebs and Waits at its core was a reintroduction to the things that love that I loved that yeah. forced not forced me, but like gave me the motivation to do stuff. Like the only reason I got in shape and I fell in love with training was from anime. Yeah. Like that I, was my I, I've heard that. Like that I've heard was so many people work out because of Dragon Ball. Like Yeah. And like now like, it's flipping where like there's people in the gym and they're watching it now and they're like, We're weebs mm -hmm. too. And it's like, but for what reason? Like, do yeah. you like it because you like watching fighting? Or is it mm -hmm. you were bullied and beat up and like every day I would be coming home and I would get teased, mm -hmm. bullied, beat up, whatever it was, and I came home and me and my brother would sit on the fucking couch and we'd watch Dragon Ball Z, we'd watch Trigun, yeah. we'd watched um Inuyasha, like whatever right. it was, Tenchi You're... Muyo, which we got yelled at for watching because of cat girls and boobs, you know. Yes, but like, yes, exactly. you know, like there was these things that just like, and I say this, I think almost every time I have an interview or anytime I do something is like the way that different media touches people's souls is so oh. interesting to me because you have the people that are like, right now, the One Piece live action coming out, mm -hmm. the amount of shit I'm getting for the hype that I'm putting out on it is disgusting. Yeah, and I'm just like, like why I, are it's, you mad? It's wild. Like, see, I, if I, my my situation is a little different. I know Emily Rudd. <laughs> like, uh, I want to support her. She's it's great. She's there. Like, yeah. But if I say anything, all of the anime fans are gonna be like, what? <laughs> I, can't. I can't. It's so silly. All you gotta I, do is be like, take it up with Oda. He yeah, said know, yes. Right? So yeah. he said it's yeah, exactly. But like, I think about like going back to the coming home from being bullied all day at, at school or whatever. Mm. I'm imagining like i had the rough days every once in a while too and again it's like going back to my younger self and having a conversation with him i can only imagine what it was like having those rough days i remember seeing goku go super saiyan for the first time yeah and how it felt like yeah. we get our releases from watching our favorite characters go through these horrible things we watch krillin get blown up and goku has to view that as a as friend and he the only thing he could do was get angry and that tapped into that power that we all wish we had i'm it so glad is, you brought that up yeah. so fulfilling to see that like that's what gives us the drive to push harder sometimes that's what gets yeah. people to go lift the weights that's what gets people to wake up the next morning sometimes and it's something silly like a cartoon for us yeah but that's what does it like i mean the excitement i get for godzilla movies sometimes like that that's the drive you know like that that back in the day when when my mom had passed away, I knew there was a Godzilla movie coming out and that was the only thing I looked forward to. And then I started watching Dragon Ball Super and I knew this thing called Ultra Instinct was coming and that was what I was looking forward to. Like <laughs> those little moments in, yeah. in these media is also what helps push us get to get through our, our tough times. And that's awesome, in my opinion. Yeah. I don't know and if like, it exactly whole... relates to what you were saying there, no, but that's kind of how I view it. Yeah. But that's like, but that's the other side of it, right? Like mm -hmm. there's... And like part of what I wanted to talk about at some point was like mental, physical health and like the stuff that mm -hmm. you do for it, like for yourself. And like, I, I can't like, there's so many days, even now, like I'm, I'm, I'm so excited and happy to like push this stuff and I enjoy doing it. And I found me in a position where it's just like everything else in the world could go to absolute hell. And as long as I could like have conversations with great people, as long as I can make people laugh and smile, whatever it is, like I'm winning on that. And like, That's all that I'm trying to give back what I got from anime and like present that and maybe help somebody else figure that stuff out. Yeah. And it's just like, it's, it's so interesting to hear everyone else's like view and lens on this. Cause it's, yeah. You know what I mean? So like, I guess that, that just transitions into it. Like the, like the yeah. mental health side of stuff, the physical health side of stuff. Like you were talking earlier, how like it was tougher with like different jobs and stuff like that. But mm -hmm. like, how do you balance that? Like, what are the things that you do that you know, you kind of handle on your end. 
Yeah, so that's that's a tough one for me because I deal with chronic pain. Um, mm. I got injured on a photo set about 10 years ago, maybe a little less, that uh, hit my shoulder pretty hard. A whole wall fell and collapsed on me um, without getting into the details. And so I have to do regular stretching and yoga as often as I can. And admittedly, I'm not as good as I should be at it. Mm. Um, but doing like a photo shoot might kind of put me down for a couple of days after that. You know, oh, like wow. I, have okay. to, I have to really keep up on it and be physical um i try to do yoga often i try to just like if i can which i normally do couldn't give myself like a few mental days between a shoot or something like that but like a week like last week where i was in new york on the ground it was every day gotta shoot 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 gotta yeah, be in yeah. downtown manhattan shooting maybe 13 hours a day and then being back at 8 a.m the next morning to do it again you just go through those and then you physically just take it and then get home and do your best to recover. Like I, I just take a lot of like hot bath stretch and all that kind of stuff. And I do chiropractic work for my injury and get massages if I can, but it all builds up in finances as well too. So you got, yeah, it gets, yeah. Best I can is just doing the stuff at home. I have a gym membership now cause I have the time to do that again. So I'm trying to get back into that not as good as I should be, <laughs> but that's just, that's part of the game. We're always, going too so it's like doing as much as i can but when my body says it's done i do have to stop and i get pretty pretty tight pretty sore especially in this area especially when i've got a camera under, around my neck or yeah something. i'm sure yeah pretty like i feel like i'm like this sometimes and just yeah you're just caught on the phone yeah <laughs> yeah yeah exactly so i just have to personally keep up with that but again admittedly i'm not the best at it because i'm so busy sometimes and that's that's just the nature of the game it is yeah <laughs> but, yeah yeah, and, that, and I mean, like you, you're always working out, and I'm like, how does he never soar? <laughs> it's I'm like, always sore. I, <laughs> it's my secret. I go to the gym. That's probably it. So that's the Hulk secret. I'm always angry. Yeah. Um, it's like I assume, like, yeah, I, I'm always. Whenever I go to the gym, I'm like, God, I'm gonna be sore for like three days after this. God. And then I go and I'm sore for three days after this. And then yeah. I go back and I'm like, I'm constantly sore. How do I stop this? I'm stretching. Why isn't it working? <laughs> but that's just part of my chronic pain too, and it's just dealing with it. That's the hard part stretching through it and i i'm to the point where i like i wonder if i i'm so used to the pain that i don't know when i'm hurting <laughs> that, <laughs> which is not healthy no that's a and real that's, a, that's a real thing it's the that's same thing with like thing. how am i never sore it's just like with yeah. the goals that i have for the co competitive side of things like mm -hmm. i'm pushing myself like a lot harder than i'm gonna get yelled at by many people for this too but uh even some of the people that do compete do and like, I'm just always, you're just used to it. You just like, like today I was mm -hmm. walking around like an old ass man. Cause I did legs yesterday, like yeah. to the T yeah. and it's just you like, okay, you lift your legs. You know, you're just oh shuffling. yeah. Yeah. Oh. Sitting down on the yeah. toilet was not an easy, an easy yeah. endeavor, you know? Oh, and yeah. it's just like, and I mean, for me, photo shoots, I'm squatting all day long mm -hmm. and I don't realize it until the next morning I sit up out of bed and I'm like, Oh, legs. Hi. Yeah. <laughs> like, and it's oh, not I just like exist. I'm doing, yeah. I'm not doing like 10 reps or anything. I'm doing like a whole day's worth of just squats, oh, yeah. just nonstop. And it's like, why are my legs always in pain? Oh, that's why. That's and why I yeah. take a week to recover after stretching and foam rolling and using a barricade and just cracking backs and all that stuff as yeah. much as I can. And, and then feeling good and then flying back out to New York and doing it again. Yeah, <laughs> Coming rinse back and repeat. Feeling, yeah. Feeling like crap again. <laughs> okay. Like, so, yeah, my, my hands and wrists right now after holding that camera last week are just like, yeah yeah you're gonna you're gonna That's upgrade that. to one of the uh like the the crazy gimbals i, just I like... should i should one of the videographers had like a backpack that distributed the weight and it oh, had yeah. like it on a, on a bungee and i was like oh, i need one of those yeah if you if you it's lose like, that I... over here let me know yeah yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. i had i was like can i pick up your camera and i touched it i was like it's lighter than my phone and yeah. i'm using like my thumb to hold it and it's a that's heavier crazy. camera than mine I was like, oh i need one of these yeah things. that's crazy yeah so yeah. what about mental health stuff right i mean like obviously i know there's going to be like i watch monster movies i know that's going to be mm -hmm. in there you know that's what that is um just yeah taking the mental space for that um turning off i play a lot of video games when i can uh i got a switch recently so on my flights i've been a, a blessing <laughs> oh yeah playing lots of classic snes games loving that but yeah, no, just uh, taking as much time as I need just watching things if I can. Um, separating from, this is, I, I'll say this is easier said than done because I'm like trying to, it's like difficult to this, which I'm not good at this. <laughs> <laughs> I, yeah, I guess I'm probably needing to work on this a little bit more because yeah, just, uh, yeah, just 
making sure I turn off from work. And that's not always so easy because when you're a freelancer, sometimes it's always work, you know? Yes. Yeah. I have to post on Instagram now or something, or I have to make sure I get a video up or this yeah. or that because you're, you're the only source of work. So, yeah, but just making sure you find the space and time for that every day a little bit. Yeah. That's the best way I can do it. But I wouldn't say that's always the best way to do it. There's yeah, probably better ways. We are for not professionals it's like when for it me, comes to the mental health space. Yeah. By the way. Yeah. But yeah. yeah. I, I mean, that could also be me doing yoga and then that hour I try to do it. I've been quiet and not on my phone and all that kind of stuff, you know? So yeah, I'm working on my body, but also quieting my brain. But I think I have like ADHD or something going on up here that it's hard for me to like not do that. Yeah, I'll be yeah. stretching and then I'll look at, I'll be looking at my toys while I'm stretching and be like, I need to move that one. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that one fell over, and then I'm going to stare at it the entire time I'm stretching and not actually. I'm going to fix it. Yeah, so, yeah I got to fix it. I got to fix it, and then I get up and fix it, and then I don't go back from that. And I'm like, okay, I stretched. I'm yeah, I did, did my that job. Three yeah. minutes. Okay. Was three minutes, and I'm good. Drinking water. I do a lot of drinking water. That's one thing I do a lot of. I have to pee all the time because of it. It's one but thing water I need is to be better important. on. Yeah, I need to hydrate mm-hmm. better. It's one thing I do. I even mm-hmm. I, I, you know, I struggle with it. So, I, but. I. I drink too much water. I think I pee so much. I like. I think you'll like this one. Number one, dad. Number one, dad. Dude, don't even get me started yeah. on that conversation. <laughs> I love that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I did a I did a yeah, Father's Day thing like last year, I think, and I was just like the number one dad in all of anime was Piccolo. That's it, yes. hands down. Yes. Like, yeah. And so. then Dragon Ball Super superhero proved that. <laughs> Don't yeah. want to throw Goku under the bus or anything, but nah. you know he might be worse nah. than Yujiro Hanma. Just saying. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, he's he's dropped the ball lately. Super Goku, whatever they've done to him in this character, he's not the same. No, yeah, <laughs> they've, written Go- they've written Goku way dumber than normal, and yeah, bring back GT, that, right? Yeah, <laughs> don't scare anybody with that. Yeah. Oh, coming here to see Nick? Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. I got a visitor again. He wants to join. What's your opinion? <laughs> Nip in the microphone. Get Get involved, yeah. So we talked about the monster stuff. We talked about the photography Mm -hmm. stuff. We've sprinkled a little bit of the anime weeby side of things in there, you know? But, like, let's... Mm -hmm. The weeb... Your weeb background. You're, like, where did that originate? Is that still, like, the monster side of things? And that just kind of transitioned in? Or was there, like, a... Yeah? I think so. Because Pokemon was huge. Oh, yeah. During my childhood. Of course, yeah. I don't care what anybody says. That was anime and always has been anime. It's just not as anime as like Dragon Ball was. It's Japanese animation. Um, but Pokemon was huge when I was young. My family like collected Pokemon cards as like a hobby, but mm-hmm. she, my mom stole our like. She's okay. We would sit around the dinner table at for like three or four hours every Saturday and Sunday night after my dad would come home with boxes of unopened Pokemon packs. Man. This is back when it was like first editions only. There wasn't like the second set yet. Yes. Like that. And we would, with like white gloves, pull cards out and put them in sleeves and my mom would eBay them. And she made a lot of money back then. So there was like this like strong love for Pokemon, but then it became such a job for me as a child that I was like, I don't like Pokemon anymore, <laughs> I say. But then I, I never, never stopped. So there was that. Um, that was definitely an influence to get me into the animation. But I had a babysitter that was right next door to me that okay. would like he would he was like uh, the cool older guy yeah, that would yeah, babysit yeah. me. He was probably like five years older than me, but he knew about Dragon Ball Z and all these other anime things along with me liking Godzilla. So he showed me these Japanese anime things. I saw things like the Giver, the animated version of it, way too young. Okay, like, I don't know if yeah. you've seen Giver, it's very violent. <laughs> um <laughs> I think Princess Mononoke I saw like Mm. right when it came to America somehow. Okay. Um, And like not having context of what those movies are. The first thing I remember seeing as a kid is Ishitaka's um, taking the bow and someone's arms getting just lobbed off by the bow and arrows Mm -hmm. or the guy's head. Like, and I'm not used to seeing cartoons do that kind of stuff. So seeing that, I'm probably all under the age of 10 or something. And so all that stuff hit right. And then I'd grown up watching (laughs) Dragon Ball. Regular Dragon Ball. I hope yes, my man. Here. My man. Yeah. There we go. Yeah. yeah. Uh, I grew up watching regular Dragon Ball because it was airing on like this WB channel that yeah. I had growing up. But it was like very fuzzy and I could barely see it. So I had a little bit of exposure to Dragon Ball, like Kid Goku Dragon Ball. Yeah. And then 
they started showing Dragon Ball Z at that same channel, and it was further along Goku. So I was like, what is this? But I watched that, and it was the Saiyan Saga, and they just kept playing the Saiyan Saga over and over again. And then Cartoon <laughs> Network got it. Yeah. And I just kind of fell in love with it, you know? And I got super hyped on this stuff. I bought that magazines before the Frieza saga even started, and I had characters that I never even heard of. I had Broly in this magazine and stuff like that. So I'm like getting hyped up by stuff that I know is coming, but I'm only in Frieza, and like we're all collectively only having Frieza right now too. Yeah. So then Super Saiyan Goku happens, and I think that was the moment that we're all like just grabbed it. Yeah. 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 That and that just like game changer. I'm probably like ten or eleven, and it never left me, and. Dragon Ball has been a one of, like a constant as well. Like I've never gotten tired of it. Anytime yeah. something new came out, I fall right back in love with it. And when it was in a tie, it just says, I'd be like, oh, cool. I love Dragon Ball. But then when something new gets announced, right back in, always probably will be. Yeah. Um, yeah. But no, it was Dragon Ball, Pokemon, some like Miyazaki Ghibli stuff. Um, and then just like, I think I saw like Ghost in the Shell when I was oh, a kid. Okay. Like, yeah. Like, Probably should have seen that when you were a kid, but that's okay. That's fine. Yeah, yeah. I (laughs) saw it on a VHS in Alaska at my grandparents' 50th anniversary party when my cousin was watching it at his house or something like that. And I'm like a little little innocent minded Mike that doesn't know anything that he's seeing. And then come see cyberpunk related things. Yeah, (laughs) this naked chick rips off this robot and her arms come off, and I'm just like (laughs) (laughs) cartoons can do that. I love it. Yeah, and probably Akira. I probably saw way too young. That messed me up. Like, yeah, so good so, though. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh yeah, you it's did incredible. it right. You did it right. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I saw stuff that I definitely shouldn't have, and that was my exposure to anime. And then it was like, oh, there's this thing called Toonami, and you guys are out watching it. What? Where have you guys been? Like, Big W. My, na- yeah. my neighbor over here has been showing me somehow for the last ten years. Like, yeah. he's got Dragon Ball on tape, and they're all in Japanese. I have this Majin Buu guy, and you don't even know who that is. Yeah, yeah. Like, Let me tell you who Majin Buu is, yeah. yeah. Wait till you see the fusions, and then everybody's like, what? What and is I'm that? Like, I, don't, I don't even know how to explain it, but two characters that become <laughs> one. And then I so find out it's through dancing, and I'm like, wait, what? Dancing is the key to power. Yeah, yeah. 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 No, that's, that's so that was good. probably, like, I'd say that was the way I found it, but. Okay. It's like, kind of, anime's always been in my life, but I, I've never not known it, you know? Yeah, yeah. It wasn't something that I adopted way late in life. It's just literally been a part of, and like Super Sentai and Power Rangers and all that kind of stuff. Like they're all similar influences. I was a hardcore Power Rangers fan as a yeah. kid. I saw the first like two or three movies in theaters. Same with Pokemon. Like those were heavy influences. And then you get Massive. Dragon Ball Z, which has very similar energy to like Power Rangers at times. And, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. and even the kid, if the Ginyu Force is Super Sentai, right? <laughs> like they yeah. are literally they're a joke, and it's perfect. And, and that's the stuff coming back to rewatching Dragon Ball as an adult. That stuff you get as a, the humor is so much funnier as an adult than it ever was. Yeah, I'm when things start joke. clicking. Yeah. Or even just like catching jokes that I didn't even realize were a joke, but like because they the dub was different or something like that. I'm watching it in Japanese and they have different music and there's just jokes that are all around and then you just don't catch because you're a kid and you're wanting to see the punches and the fighting. Yeah. But yeah. It's such a funny show too. And I love the comedy in Dragon Ball. So good. Yeah. so good especially like original dragon ball comedy. like dragon ball's original series is just hilarious so that was my next question dragon ball or dbz oh that's tough because i i only recently finished the original og series last year after oh, taking wow. five years okay. to watch it i'd seen chunks of it growing up but i never watched it in front to back entirety i'd always seen z onwards and a little bit of dragon ball like i said when i was a kid like it aired just little bits of it but from front to back Dragon Ball last year was a like finishing the, the final tournament with Piccolo and everything was incredible and just I loved it but then I, I just have such core memories of Dragon Ball Z and yeah. like it's just days of like again Super Saiyan Goku happening or the androids showing up and Trunks showing up like just moments of that show are also iconic and I remember uh back when the show was airing on toonami they'd release the vhs's at the same time Mm -hmm, and sometimes mm -hmm. they'd release the vhs's before they aired it and i would go try to find like the trunks episodes before they were on so i could tell all my friends that i saw them before they did and like that (laughs) kind of stuff and same with super saiyan 3 goku i'd get like this random episode that had goku super saiyan 3 on the cover and i'd watch it it's goku and super saiyan 3 fighting kid boo no context to what's happening because i'm 
watching random episodes, but I've seen it. I've seen Super Saiyan 3 Goku. No yeah, one else game. has. Yeah. But that's so gotta good. be first. Like that's the, that was the way I like took in my Dragon Ball and uh, for a while. But then there was the watching it in chronological. But yeah, yeah. I think I think to answer your question, it's DBZ. But I did have such a great time just diving into the original Dragon Ball story. Yeah, but they're two. They're, they're the so same different. universe. They're yeah. so different. It's hard to compare them. Like your Dragon Ball Z poster is complete different energy than Dragon Ball poster. Like, Big time. Yeah. Like you can't you can't compare them, but they are the same characters. You tough. They yeah. they're their own thing. And like same with Super. Like I like Super, but it's not near Dragon Ball or Dragon Ball Z for me. Agreed. I didn't love GT. Like I I finished it, but I don't really remember most of it. Yeah. Didn't love yeah. it. But like there are characters or designs and stuff that I love. Like, yes. There, there's reasons why I still love it. Like a character will look cool, but I might hate his character in the show or something like yeah, that. You know? Yeah. But yeah. It's still, good. still gotta have it on my shelf. <laughs> gotta have it. Yeah, um, you gotta have it. You can see my Dragon Ball shelf up here. I guess up uh right there is all oh, loaded, yeah. Self. Yeah, it's like super, I can see Broly. All... I think I can see is that gohan top left no yeah uh, there's yeah it's got broly i got uh ultra instant goku beerus funks cooler Pi Pi. Every, everybody's up there oh yeah you got it, yeah my cable was longer i'd show you all that's right i'll, I'll demand it's, photos <laughs> i'm such a good cameraman you guys can you see this yeah aren't you this i mean is, aren't you the professional here wait a minute yeah webcams there we go there's the collection that's the couch and then there's more over I, here. this whole setup is awesome thanks you're motivating yeah, me to like actually get my shit together yeah, and then we got like lots of Godzilla stuff in here. It's all Godzilla stuff. Are there. you gonna get the new one that's coming out? The um, uh huh, yeah. That looks so good. Yeah, it looks I'm so good. Excited. I'm so, that looks like one of their best SH Monster Arts figures, and I'm very excited for that one. I'm just excited for that movie in general. I like. Yeah. I I'm tending to like the Japanese um executions more than the american ones lately mm, they mm -hmm. they all tap into different versions of the fandom for me but the serious grounded like real life take where like shin godzilla felt like a real event that the japanese yeah. government was having to uh tackle i love those it's just i love that kind of stuff but then i grew up with the silly godzilla doing flips and spinning a guy around with his tail and stuff like that and yeah, the suits yeah. flopping around and that's what the monster versus king kong like the the legendary American Godzilla movies are giving me that right now. So yeah. they're giving me the silly wacky with the CGI stuff, and then Japan's giving me the the award winning ones. Yeah, so, yeah. I'll have I, to I'll, I'll take I'll take both. I'll have to dive into I like I think Shin Godzilla was the first Godzilla movie I've seen in oh, years. Wow. So okay. like I'm gonna have to and I already promised you at I think Anime NYC that I was gonna catch up, but I haven't done yeah. that yet. So well, I'll I, have anyone to... who tells me they're gonna catch up, I always laugh because I'm like, you're gonna watch 30 four plus godzilla movies <laughs> yeah i don't remember the last yeah, one i watched man i don't even think i didn't see godzilla versus kong i didn't see i didn't see any i saw the first the first one when they reintroduced With the new model brian cranston yeah, yeah the brian yeah. so that i saw good. that one because i think honestly i think the 98 movie put me off of godzilla i think oh, that's it, what happened it would it yeah. would i mean it's not really a good representation of what the character because i would is. go to my my mom's godson's house we'd always go and visit and me mm -hmm. and him would sit in the back with like the old turn the tube on TVs yeah. and the 60s yeah. VHSs. And we would just yeah. like sit like, I didn't tell the story those yet, but those. like I would watch those and I was like, this is so good. Like, yeah. I don't know what it is about this, but it's so good. And like, that's yeah. what I was expecting. And then the 98 one came out. I was like, that's a Raptor. That's just that's, been yeah. supersized. What happened? And that's like, exactly what they were trying to do. They said they wanted to make a Jurassic Park kind of energy yeah which, we'll leave it we'll leave it there <laughs> that's that's what that is so but they're all on hbo Ma well not all of them a lot of them are on other that the hbo max it's called max now but yeah, you have yeah max or or um even free on youtube and stuff like that there's a lot of um that are on the free streaming services if you okay. just type in yep. godzilla you'll find a lot of those old ones you were just talking about not so much the recent ones but uh the ones with the more crude special effects the the sillier campier vibes those ones yeah, are yeah. usually on streaming so okay. if you want to just watch a silly one those ones are up there okay, um, okay. Like the one i mentioned at the beginning of the stream that one is not on any streaming i believe i think you have to purchase that one possibly okay. um, but i recommend um like the brian cranston one is good it's just uh godzilla's not so much the star of his own movie in that movie unfortunately mm -hmm. um, but then kong skull island it's fun it's really good it's just solid, silly monster movie. Um, 
with a great cast like John Goodman and Samuel L. Jackson kick ass in it. Um, <laughs> my personal favorite, uh, Godzilla King of the Monsters, is the third in the franchise. Uh, just got the Godzilla music in it. They got the sound effects correct. They just like did so many like things correct for the fans. That, yeah, yeah. That this is a good solid like godzilla movie for me <laughs> and not everybody agrees with me on that but it's just for for me it just hit a lot of the right marks and i might be biased because i got to work with the director on a photo shoot uh at the he he's um his name's mike doherty and he uh he's a big horror fan he directed that movie trick or treat as okay, well okay and he bought out the room that michael myers killed his sister in in the halloween house and he rents his office out of there and they did an article on Halloween and that house, and he had rented it, so I did a photo shoot for that whole magazine article. Oh, so that's, that's why cool. I'm a little little biased, but had a fan moment there working with the guy who made a Godzilla movie. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but also a really cool guy and also a movie I just really enjoyed. So that one's really fun. Again, though, it's like a very Godzilla fan movie. Mm. But so if, if people it, wanted to like get into the kaiju scene and like kind of get going with that these, what do you suggest these Those? american these american godzilla movies and kong movies are really good um entry points for a lot of fans i'd say especially like godzilla versus kong that was just a they did a good job with the monster fighting in that one there's always the argument that the people stuff in these movies is the weakest and mm. i will not disagree with that um i do appreciate when a godzilla movie or a monster movie can have a good script <laughs> along with the the plot of yeah, the movie yeah, yeah. as well so uh i i do think that they have room to grow with these movies but if you are just looking for like monsters punching each other that hits that need these these godzilla versus kong movies are a good one um, okay. and there's a new one coming out next year super excited for it um, i was gonna ask uh, are you upset they delayed it or what but uh, it's this is it's a touchy subject because i'm not i'm not upset they delayed it because of the delay i'm upset that the strike hasn't been resolved and the people aren't getting paid for the work that they do and that's yeah. why i don't care i think the movie can get delayed again i want my friends who work in these movies to, to get, get money paid. yeah i have a buddy yeah. that's in and there I, right now too so yeah, yeah. It's, and i'm yeah. i'm in the i live in the area where everybody's yeah, striking true. and it's like it's gonna really start affecting people more than it should because they the, the ceos could take a pay cut or they could pay these people because they're not even asking for one percent of their overall but profits so yeah they yeah. could pay they could pay these writers and actors so yes i'm bummed out it got delayed but circumstantially i'm more ticked off at why it got delayed and not yeah. and it's not i'm not mad at the actors or the writers i'm mad at the ceos those yep. are the people that need to because they're Rightfully the ones that are saying so. all of yeah they're yeah. the ones that are saying all these demands are unrealistic apparently and, and don't like, take a okay, bonus it's fine yeah like, don't yeah. don't go buy a third super yacht all right you don't need a third <laughs> one like so these are the people that don't do any of the actual work on these productions yeah. they're just the ones that say yes or no on certain things so right it's quite disgusting but that's the corporate greed level of the, the universe, that's it so. man gamera yeah. rebirth have you been looking have you been following like watch the trailers like all that stuff <laughs> what's your gamera I background because Okay, so there are multiple ways to pronounce his name, and I've always said Gamera. Okay. So I, when people say Gamera, I have to be like, are you talking about from Guardians of the Galaxy? But no. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I can see um, that. Yeah. Gamera and I, we have a very strong relationship as well, too. Um, I have all of his movies. He's got not nearly as much as Godzilla, but he yeah. has a, a small handful. There's three from the 90s that are badass. Okay. Gamera, the Guardian of the Universe, Gamera, um, Advent Legion, and Gamera, Revenge of Iris. Just three masterpieces, solid, just good kaiju movies. Uh, highly recommend them if no one's seen them as kaiju fans. They're also the practical suits, so buildings and stuff getting knocked over and all that. Just really well-made movies. Those movies are literally like the the bar for hmm. God, like kaiju films. Like anyone who's making a new Godzilla or whatever movie, they're always compared back to these three G Gamera movies. Oh wow! Okay. And Shin Godzilla and like the original Godzilla. That's how highly regarded these Gamera movies are. I am not a fan of CG anime. I'm right there with you. <laughs> so I'm right there with you. The designs of all the creatures in kaiju look awesome, but every time I see anything in motion i kind of tune out i'm mm. not super super excited for what i've seen i wish i was 
I loved the designs, but just like the animation style did not has not worked for me yet. Yeah. But I'm still gonna watch it. I'm not gonna not watch it. I'm a gamer, a fan. I'm gonna binge the thing when it comes out, but I'm not looking forward to the animation style. Yeah. Um personally, like you can do that CG anime in in certain ways and you can execute it really well. Godzilla did it two years ago with the anime Godzilla Singular Point that's on Netflix. Mm -hmm. So it's a really short 10 episode watch. It's really dense in science, but that like the Godzilla stuff is awesome. I loved it. Uh, Some people said there was not enough Godzilla action, but I think the build up to Godzilla at the end was incredible. And that's a way to do CGI anime along with hand drawn anime Mm -hmm, um, mm -hmm. animation. Uh, Gamera not doing that is a little disheartening for me. But again, yeah. I'm gonna watch it. It just that it, it's almost I, like the frame. It's like the frame rate. It's like different or something like that. Like I was don't about to like say they, it's like stuttery, right? Like yeah, it's like they don't look like they're in the same universe or something, or like they uh, because the frame rates don't match or something, or like the the characters are all the human characters are all hand drawn, I believe, or something. I could be wrong. No, there. they're all CG and they're worse they're CG, CG than the monsters. They're like worse you CG. See yeah, the there's budget. something. Yeah. yeah, that's right. Yeah, yeah, I have to watch the trailer again. Um, but yet every time I've watched any footage, I've just kind of been like, Ugh. Uh, yeah. <laughs> but I I'm gonna watch it. That's the thing. I, 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 I'm the, trying to the, think. The, I'm trying to see who like what studio did it. Studios I was Engi and E N G I. Yeah, I yeah. think they did the, the Godzilla animated movies that came out on Netflix a couple of years ago, too, called okay. um, Godzilla Planet Eater and Godzilla... Oh, gosh, I'm losing all the names. Um, oh, you're good. No, it's, you're a three, good. it's a three-part Netflix anime movie series, and okay. it was all CG animated, and it wasn't a big hit with fans, and a lot of it was the, the animation, but the story was really dense and slow, too, on those, yeah. so... I just hope these movies, or these movies, these shows the six episode parts or whatever it is like they just do a good job yeah do a good action do good job action wise they tell a good story and i could see past the animation if that is the case yeah it's one everything of those, else I, is good I, yeah mm-hmm, i don't want to give it too much judgment yet until i've seen a final product and not just a trailer totally like, fair I, I've, yeah. I've done that too where like I, I even the godzilla anime i just talked about singular point i wasn't not excited about the animation style and then when i saw it how it was executed i was like oh this actually works really well and then for like the 10 episodes i just i ate it up i loved it because it's hand-drawn and cgi animation but right right um but yeah it, it, i think it's just a budget a budgetary thing these days with these it's so companies. studio based too though mm-hmm. like studio orange did the new trigun stampede yeah and mm-hmm. i thought i was gonna hate it because trigun's one of my favorite animes of all time because that was one of like, the that's... original ones yeah that's and cgi right the new he, one but it's so good like the I way they clips, did that yeah. CG was like, wh- why isn't this the standard? Like, right. yeah. you know, so I think it just depends on who gets their hands on it and how much right. work they actually have, you know? So, right. and that's but. the thing is I, I, I've heard of an interview with the director or something of this new camera thing. And it's, it's one of those that they've said, if this does well, they're going to make a live action movie or series to that follow. Would be- Awesome. And I'm like, okay, so you're making me have to watch this to give me that. Why to give you, you the give support, yeah. Yeah, yeah, but I get that. I'm going to support you anyways, but like, that's what can you just do one or the other and not or have both. to have, not have to, <laughs> yeah, exactly, not have to tie both the success of one to the other. Like, yeah. Ugh. Just uh, how big business again, man, you know? Cause, exactly, because camera fans have been, we've been asking for something like, a new movie for the last movie he had was like 2003 or something like that. So it's okay. been maybe even a little later than that, but it's been, a, it's been a while. It's almost 20 years. So yeah. like, yeah, it's time. <laughs> and when yeah. we, when we see he's coming back and then turns out to just be an anime and it's CG anime, it's like, Oh yeah. You couldn't have done <laughs> something feels else. Low effort, yeah. But it might, it, not to say it is low effort, but it, we'll on the find surface out. level, it, it looks low effort, but well, I don't want to say that it is. We'll have to reconvene after that yeah. comes out. And yeah. we'll uh, we'll do a review of that. And you I'm have to sure make sure you get... watch Shin Kamen Rider because I want, oh, I want yeah. your I, opinion that's on that. literally probably it's probably happening before the end of the week. It's like my Perfect. wisdom teeth hopefully aren't going to put me down too hard, but I do plan on like I got a couple of movies I haven't watched yet, and I'm going to have to try to knock them out soon. Perfect. And I always try to watch stuff on my TV. I don't like to watch stuff on my iPad or anything. I got to watch yeah. it on my big TV. Yeah. My sound system and everything. Like hundred percent. Yeah, I do that or I'm like in here with like these on, just trying to like yeah, get the full just gotta have a sound system or something. Yeah, like yeah. A lot of times my girlfriend will go to bed and I'll watch a movie at like two AM with those on so I can just <laughs> nice So your head can shake. Yeah. 
Yeah, so, so I don't have to wake up anybody. Yeah, yeah. So tell everybody where they can find you, where you want them to find you, what's going on with Mike's yes. Monsters, all that kind of stuff, you know? Yeah, um, I've got a couple of things coming up on my YouTube channel. I'm trying, trying to bring that back to life. Um, kind of like what you said earlier, you do this weebs and weights stuff to inspire. Mike's Monsters on YouTube is kind of the same thing, too. I, I sometimes occasionally just put monster fun stuff on there, but I'll also throw in photography tutorials and messages on how to get better at what you do and that kind of work. So I've got stuff coming on there. Um, you mentioned it offline, but we I've been uploading a Who's That Kaiju series on there. They're in so little good. nano block little mysterious nano block videos that reveal who the kaiju is by the end of it inspired by who's that pokemon um but it's a fun little project i've done and i've got about nine more of those coming up before uh, probably the end of september uh i also have a this is a little different but an emmy award with nomination for prey q a session that i went to uh what was that sunday it's a half hour long video that's going up on my youtube channel that awesome. also has a bunch of footage of the predator itself i got to see the suit in person and i just got to take my camera to it so i got a bunch of b-roll of that so i'm going to be putting that on my youtube channel as well um bunch of toy reviews i got the super seven dragon zord from power rangers on my desk over here that i haven't opened yet so <laughs> yes. my first power rangers collectible in a long time but it's the dragon zord so i couldn't resist so i'm going to probably do a video of that um, but I'm on YouTube on Mike's Monsters. I think if you just do youtube.com slash Mike's Monsters, it might find me. But if you just Google Mike's Monsters, I'm sure that it's there. Uh, I'm on Instagram at mikes.monsters. So Mike's period monsters. Uh, you'll see all my toy photography on there. Uh, I'm on Twitter and I'm not calling it anything else besides Twitter, but I might be leaving that place because of how garbage it is lately. It's so bad. Um, I I am Mike's uh, monsters on there as well, uh, but I am leaving it or either going to delete the app and just post from my computer and never look at that place ever again. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, I got an invite to that Blue Sky social app or whatever that replacement. I'm gonna be Mike's monsters on there too. If anyone uses that, I don't know how dedicated I will be. But Instagram Mike's monsters. YouTube Mike's Monsters and anywhere else is probably Mike's Monsters. And okay. right now it's a, a xenomorph head icon. So if you look at that, it's a green xenomorph head on a blue background. That's usually the way to tell me, tell it to me. So now I'll make sure of all of those are going to be in the description below and we're very long winded. So very long winded list of two links. <laughs> no, it's good. It's good. We all, we, we needed the opinions. Everyone knows that yeah. Twitter is in a, in a shambles right. right now. So it's one of those things that every day I open the app, I just like making the, Ugh, I yeah, this place. Kind of, I, I want to get. I want to delete it. And I get angry every time I open it. So it's probably a sign that I need to take a choice and kill it. <laughs> right, Mike, man, yep. appreciate you. It was great catching up. Thank you for coming on. Thank I'll you. Definitely have you on as soon as possible, and we'll uh, maybe review some monster stuff. Yeah, yeah. All right, man. Got a lot of it coming. That's it. That's it. Be healthy. Stay healthy. Keep uplifting each other. See you guys in the next one.